party on the pod. Ooh, party on party the pod. pod. Party, party on the pod. Party on the pod. Party on the pod. Nailed it. <laughs> that was not feedback. That was Lindsay being slow. It was. Oh, God. <laughs> You know, it's because she doesn't she doesn't um, participate in me and Ashley's uh, banter, so she's not used to the timing of things <laughs> like me and Ashley are. So she just. But you kinda... know what? Shout out to the shout out to just the blind support she gives us, though. Just like uh, yeah. out of always, nowhere, <laughs> always the cheerleader will always laugh first. Just... Because that's Cindy. That's the Cindy in her. Yeah, that's yeah. the Cindy in her. Yeah, for those that don't know, we're three sisters and we haven't figured it out already. So I'm the oldest. <laughs> Ashley, and I'm... then Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm the oldest Ashley. I'm the middle dysfunctional child one, Lauren. Wow. Um, I'm the youngest, <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay, yeah. And so we nickname Lindsay Cindy because she's just freaking the perfect child. She's our parents' favorite, even though they deny, <sighs> deny, deny. She's like just you know gonna get married first even though she's the youngest gonna, gonna have, have kids first yeah just the even though i mean that's i don't i don't think i want kids so i think that you know but regardless you know on paper she's like she's just the perfect Lindsay's the perfect. Lindsay's the one that's gonna do it all you know she's yeah. got she's got the college degree in a really hard subject math like who does that who yeah. smart people do that and then she's going to have a job that pays a lot of money uh aka now and uh all she does is just sit at home and eat grapes hey Phoebe's eating my headphone wire um <clears throat> and she's getting married and she's going to have babies and then she's going to buy land and she's going to build all of us houses to live on and she's going to take care of us that she also is side Cindy. Note- Side note, she also really does have a really hard job in math and analytics. That's whatever. So (laughs) she's just, and to tell you the story. So, okay. Lauren and I went to the Celine Dion concert back in January. Shout out. Celine Dion was amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Powerful, heavenly vocals. Mm -hmm. I cried. I laughed. Mm -hmm. I danced. Mm -hmm. I winced Mm -hmm. at my own singing. Mm -hmm. It all happened. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. So when we were standing in the line to the Celine Dion concert, Lauren and I, anytime we're together, I feel like we always remind each other and the world, really, of two just old ladies, just (laughs) cackling, bitter, 80 plus year old old ladies. And we love it. And it's a vibe. And we get it. And so if we, we decided to give ourselves names on this this wonderful evening waiting in line for Celine Dion and what were our names again I was you are Ethel Ethel yes because I'm Esther and you're Esther yes perfect names for us the more you get to know us on this podcast if you don't know us already you're gonna know perfect absolutely you're Esther she's Ethel perfect (laughs) so (laughs) Lindsay we were thinking about Lindsay and we're like, okay, well, Lindsay needs a name, obviously, because it's us three always and forever. So Lindsay needs a name. And we were just like, who's the old lady that's always helping the other two out? The one that has like all the friends, like knows all the neighbors, sends pies and baked goods to people when they're sick, (laughs) takes care of her parents when they get old, like makes excuses for her two older bitchy sisters, like the Cindy. Cindy does it. Cindy's the one. Cindy's the one who does it. Cindy's the one that the world will be up in flames. And Cindy's the one that's like the only positive one. She has like positive things to say. Well, I mean, at least we're all together or like she'll find the the positive yeah. things in a really shitty situation to the point to where you just want to look at her and you're just like, you know what, Cindy? Not right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. like we get it. You are a good person. Yeah. But I don't give a shit right now. That's Cindy. But you love her because it's Cindy. You can't hate mm-hmm. her. She mm-hmm. just bought you a pie because it's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can't hate th- you can't hate her by the same time you're just like, God damn it, can you just not? Can you just yeah. not be happy all the time? <laughs> can you just yeah. not be this little bubble of sunshine, this little rainbow fart all the time? You know, that's Cindy. Mm -hmm. And Esther, (laughs) a.k.a. me, if that description of Cindy did not give you a description of me, then (laughs) we've got a lot of learning to do. But that's okay because I'm here for it. Yeah, we're here for it. And Ethel, I think Ethel... (laughs) 
school is in right now. <laughs> Go on. Ethel, we love Ethel because Ethel is that sharpshooter that just she just gets you she just right at the end you know you don't really see it but then she forgets her name like two seconds after because <laughs> she does she doesn't know who she is is she esther or is she ethel i have to tell all the day you're ethel <laughs> but i will and that's not just with my with my old lady name that like, is with everything <laughs> like ashley ashley's Ashley's uh, alter ego, Ethel. These are our alter egos, right? We're not, our alter egos aren't superheroes. They're fucking old, bitter women. <laughs> which and is I'm awesome, here for it. Which is awesome. And I'm here for I it. I don't want to be a superhero. <laughs> I want to be a, on the porch talking shit because you look ugly. Like, that is who I want to be. Anyways, <laughs> Ethel, <laughs> Ethel is like the, um, conspiracy theorist she's the one that you're like oh ethel you're just talking shit you're just batshit crazy like whatever ethel but really (laughs) she's like she knows shit you know like that's ethel she'll give it to you you don't know where it comes from she'll she'll give it to you you know yeah i mean you know cindy has tuesday pies (laughs) you know and i have friday saturday and sunday conspiracies that's how it is that's how it is (laughs) yeah so yeah so that's that's the story of us that's the story of cindy and we have many alter egos by the way you're just meeting our old lady ones (laughs) the the more prominent alter egos yeah (laughs) just (sighs) just wait all right so we had to pause there for a minute to change Lindsay's mic because that wasn't working and then she couldn't hear us then we tried to log the issues that we were having last week so that recording we're aware of all the issues okay we're working on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's literally no one at the time that we're we're recording this that's listened to it and I'm all <laughs> aggressive. Okay. I'm all okay. Everyone chill. Okay. So <laughs> the NPR uh article is cards called Starting a COVID nineteen social bubble, quote unquote, how safe sex communication skills can help. Okay, I was reading this article. They're totally right. Like, so there's some people talking about how they, and it's, it's kind of like, I think it was about polyamorous um, uh, couples saying how they have to have conversations all the time around safe sex practices. Of course, you know, who have you been with? Who have you interacted with? Or not, maybe not all the time, but they, they have those conversations more regularly, maybe than a monogamous couple. And then of course you have single people that have these conversations too, if they're dating someone or they're, you know, about to um, get an intimate relationship with someone, they might, they're probably going to ask, or you should ask like who that person has been with, you know, um, who that person is with now, you know, if it's not, if you're not exclusive or whatever the term is that kids use nowadays for single people. And um, they were talking about how you should really be having those conversations when you want to interact with someone in the COVID environment. And they were talking about how you should ask who that person has been with. And people are asking this. It's not just you should. People are starting to have like these conversations. And I was thinking about it and I'm thinking, I totally do. Like when Tiffany, my friend Tiffany was going to come over a few weeks back, we had a whole discussion, Mm -hmm. you know, who, um, who have I been around? And I even wanted to disclose it to her. Like, okay, I've been around these people, these people, and these people. I was wearing masks. I go to work half a day on Monday. You know, like I'm disclosing all this stuff to her. And she did the same to me. She was like, okay, well, um, this family member is a nurse. And she's, you know, telling me um, so that we're p- perfectly comfortable being in the same environment with each other. Or, you know, as, as comfortable as we can be. And we can make a plan to see each other safely. You know, if we, you know, I told her, do you want to come in the house? You don't have to. I can set up something outside. Like, I'm just like trying to make it as comfortable as possible. And of course, it turned into like a 15, 20 minute conversation. But we were able to do it comfortably and where we can we can see each other, but be, both be comfortable with how we're we're interacting with each other. So I'm going to send it to y'all and we're going to put it on social media if anyone wants to see it. But it has it definitely has a lot of in, good information, too, about um you know, having those safe conversations and they talk about negotiating commitment and, you know, limiting socializing and how that, yeah, how these safe conversations can help. It's a really good article and it just, I never made that connection before, but I thought it was interesting. You know, it's so funny after, um, 
So now that I'm newly single, you know, whatever. Whoop. <clears throat> this past relationship that I was in was really, um, cause he was kind of a, I'm going to call him a hippie. He's kind of a hippie. Okay. He was a hipster, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, just hippie lifestyle, free thinking, open thinking, you know, he's progressive, you know, we share a lot of the same, um, viewpoints on things, but there's a lot of stuff that I didn't agree with that he, anyways. Um, uh, but yeah. one thing that he just kind of like opened my eyes to a little bit more, which is so funny because things like sex education, like it's all human nature, we all do it. it. It's it's a part of life. It's a part of the cycle of life. So it's interesting that there's still so much taboo around sex education and there's still so much um, yeah. mm-hmm. conservativeness around sex education when it's like, okay, but it's but we all do it. It's human nature. Why, why, why don't you want to teach about things that happen naturally? You know, and, yeah. and so yeah. it's not bad to talk about you know, STDs and how to have safe sex and how to prevent having kids at a young age. Like that's not, those aren't things, those aren't bad things to talk about. I don't know why people have, or why the society has turned it into hush, hush. You don't talk about it. That's awkward. That's uncomfortable. That's private. That's no, like, yeah, you know, it's so, uh, yeah. I definitely don't think that, I think that those topics are taboo and they shouldn't be right. taboo. Like there's right. no reason for it. And I, you know, reading this article, even for someone who considers herself to be pretty open, like I consider myself to be pretty open. I like having um, conversations that, you know, open my mind and, and I like, uh, you know, b- discovering new things, you know, educating myself. I'm a researcher by heart. I love to research topics and stuff. So I consider myself pretty open. And I was reading that article going, ah, I never thought about it that way because in our society, no one has those conversations with us, you know, or at least rarely um, when you're young and especially for women to have those conversations about um, being comfortable with your body and, and confident with your body, but also owning your body. This is my body. No one else can tell me anything else about it. I make the choices on it, period. And, ha- and being confident enough to have those conversations and saying, no, 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 no. There's no, there's no negotiating my comfort level. This is what I'm comfortable with. And, and I also have to have that mutual respect for you. And, and that's your body. That's what you're comfortable with. So let's, let's see, you know, if we want to, to take the next steps to either be intimate or if in the case of like friendships, just to, you know, respect each other enough to have those conversations and to decide what we're, what we're both comfortable with in a COVID environment, 100% like that, those conversations don't get had a lot. And I think it's a shame. I think we should all have those conversations, even with each other, you know? So there's this, there's this question I've, I know y'all have seen it around, but I've seen it a little bit more recently where it's like, what are some things that are happening now during COVID that you want to see continue happen after things start to get better? And people are like Mm -hmm. social distancing, uh, continue to wear masks, like normalize the mask wearing. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, people always say that, um, in China, people always wear masks. Like that's just a thing that they do. Common courtesy of other people. They've always done it. This, this pandemic isn't new to mask wearing in in China. They've always worn masks in China. So it's like, how do we normalize that here? Um, the cleanliness of places. Like I tell people at work, um, we are the cleanest we've probably ever been. And I, I would like to think that all of these stores that are being open and the grocery stores and the banks, like, and the movie theaters, like, we're all sanitizing at such a higher level than we were prior. You know what right. I mean? Like, we're the, cl- this is the cleanest a lot of these places have ever been because we have to be to be open. And yeah. so people, you know, so things like that. And I think, like you said, uh, being more open to talk about the safety of others for yourself, the safety of yourself, you know, you know what I mean? Like you're saying, like, yep. um, screening people before you see, see them. Like normalize that and and other aspects, not just because we're in a pandemic, whatever. Yeah. So I think there's a lot that we're doing now that I think we should have been doing from the get go. And that goes for everything like working from home. You're seeing all these businesses that um, 
I think we talked about this uh, a while ago um, because companies had to invest in so much to like put so many employees remotely. So, you know, a lot of money was spent to buy computers and at home wirings and stuff like that, you know, to send people home. So they're not going to send y'all back into the office right away because all that money that they spent buying all computers to be at home is going to be wasted, you know? So, so remote, um, we're learning to work from home remotely is teaching us that we don't have to be in a business. We don't have to be in an office building every day, all day to get our work done. Like we can be just as productive at home. And there are studies that show you can be more productive at home because you're in a comfortable environment and you're not stressed and you're not, uh, uh, being bothered all the time, being bothered. Yeah. Being distracted and you're not on the time crunch. You can, um, you know, you can spread your hours out. You can be a little bit more flexible with that, you know? So I don't know. I just, I hope that our society is different coming out of this, but in a better way, because we're, we're realizing that all of these things that, you know, they're always saying, Oh, look, what a concept, you know, if we, if we would have been doing this already, we would probably be in a better place type of thing, you know? So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully stuff like that sticks. Cause I think those are the things that are going to make an impact. Yeah. I agree yeah, for sure. I also think some of the stuff we used to do is so disgusting now, like <laughs> on birthday cake. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've seen all those <laughs> TikToks all those. and Twitter, like all the Instagram. And it's like, no, not eating a cake that you just blew your hot, nasty breath, breath on, on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> saliva. No, yeah, that's and, funny. And, I well, and just that. like also too, like just washing your hands more. Like I know that's such a that's such a small thing, but you just don't realize how much you weren't doing it before or how much other people weren't doing it before. Oh, yes. It's disgusting. And oh you're just really like, we're just all gross people. People are fucking yeah. gross. Like that's just <laughs> what it is. People are fucking no, yeah. gross. We're gross. But seriously. Yeah. Yes. Lauren, what do you want to talk about? So, things. so I had a couple of things. So one, did you see that Morphe dropped Jeffree Star? I did. Yes. I saw it. Oh, my gosh and the plot thickens okay so i'm a sucker for bur- for a uh, beauty guru youtube drama like i'm a sucker for it because i just i'm just a sucker for drama it's just good i love drama this mm-hmm. whole shane dawson shit is just crazy it's so unfortunate it's yes it's so yeah. unfortunate and just so and now jeffrey too like <clears throat> i know jeffrey has always been a controversial person like from the get-go <clears throat> and i do not um you know, agree with his past issues with like his racial slurs and stuff like that. But you would like to think that people change and get better over time and they acknowledge. And I I know some people don't really agree with his acknowledgement of his past, whatever issues, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was just like, you're good at what you do. You make amazing makeup and you're an interesting person. (laughs) So I was, I was into him. And it just makes me so mad that talented people like that are shitty people in real life. Because now, look, he has a really good makeup brand. I really like his makeup products, his eyeshadows, his lipsticks are some of the best that I've had or that I've tried. And it sucks because I don't want to buy his products anymore. Because this situation, even though he's not really in the light like Shane is, he's not making himself look any better because he's not speaking about anything. He's not defending Shane, but he's also not... uh, uh, condemning him, you know, like he's, he's not saying anything at all. And so he's not making himself look any better right now, which makes him look just as guilty. Like he probably knew about all of this with Shane and he's probably just as shady as Shane is too, you know? So it just makes me sad because I'm like, damn it. Like, why do you have to make good products? Because (laughs) yeah. (laughs) So now I have to stop buying from him, which just sucks. So I'm just frustrated but dang, it just, but then too, like, damn, like Morphe was one of his only other sales. Like he had Morphe and I think he had a company in the UK, what, Beauty Bay, I think. Those were like the only two retailers that he was partnered with. And oh, he, he, he made a lot of money through Morphe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like that was probably, he's probably taking a huge loss from that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I didn't either. So now wow, it's I- like, <sighs> 
Yeah, because they yeah, sold that's... they sold Jeffrey Jeffrey in all of their stores, all of their retail stores. He had his own section, and then all online too. Like he had his collections that they were like regular collections that they had going. So he made a lot of money through Morphe alone. So mm-hmm. losing that, ooh, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, I've heard I've definitely heard But about... bravo to Morphe. Bravo to Morphe, man. Mm-hmm. Because I know that probably was a big loss for them too, because they also like Jeffrey also it was a good relationship, I feel like. Both of them benefited probably very well from one another, but they're standing up for the Their good side. And stuff. Right. Yeah. And bravo to them. Yeah. So Yeah, because Morphe Morphe, I, I have I've Back when I used to wear makeup, I don't really anymore, but back in the day when I did, I have some Morphe products and they are hit or miss products. Like they are like, like some of their palettes are good and some are and some of their, I know their mist, their setting spray is really good Mm -hmm. from what I remember. Anyway, so they're like hit or miss products. So I'm sure for me anyway, I'm sure Jeffree Star pumped that up like to where people bought their stuff more, but I do agree kudos to them because you're standing for something as opposed to standing for you know something that no one should stand for i mean ra- no one should stand for racism no one should stand you know right. yeah. there's just things that especially as a company if you want to get people's money i mean come on don't be divisive you know and, and that's just business 101 type of thing mm-hmm. and um so yeah good for them for for taking a stand against against issues like that i i will say that i i also too um used to really like jeffree star and but i started following him when he started doing his makeup videos but i i have seen definitely a pattern of problematic behavior over the years with him so Mm -hmm. then i stopped well i've never bought any of the jeffree star products but i definitely watched like like his videos and stuff and i loved his makeup looks and and still do he does amazing work but yeah i mean it's definitely when you start to be problematic and you start to defend things that are indefensible i mean yeah you you there's i can't really support that and so um even though i like what you're making now and and when you're not talking about those things it doesn't it doesn't negate the fact that i believe that you still believe that probably in the back of your mind and so i can't I can't support that. And then that does suck. It's the same with Shane Dawson. I started watching Shane Dawson when he was doing um, his, oh God, what was it? Like his food videos. Like when he used to just Mm -hmm. review food, like he would just eat and it was so funny and he was hilarious. And shame on me for not looking back onto his past videos. Like I just started watching him from then on. I did not like a lot of his documentaries. I'm going to be honest. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I liked some of them, but the Jake Paul series and the Tana. Um, oh, sorry, I did I can never. I didn't say her watch last that name, one. But I yeah, I can't. I didn't like any of those. I thought that they that those are problematic people. And anyway, there was just for me a lot of issues with those particular documentaries. Anyway, but overall, from what I had seen with Shane up until recently, I really liked. And shame on me for not going back and looking at his full body of work like because if I would have I oh, Jesus like the stuff that he put out I'm sorry there's no defense of it and I know he's apologized obviously publicly for it but um I so we'll see if if you know um people I guess forgive that but for me I just I can't I can't look at you the same I mean honestly yeah. that's what it turns into it turns into like I can't unsee that right and and, and, and it's I sad. and I don't feel like I so I bought I have the conspiracy palette uh, shamefully I was really into that whole thing like that whole docuseries I was really into um and then the launch itself I was like they got me okay they totally got me oh yeah the Jeffrey I'm, Star one? I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I have the conspiracy palette and it's a really great palette I like the colors I use it probably on a regular basis but now ever since this happened I'm like I don't even want to use the palette like I feel I, I didn't even so I but I am not, I'm not sure too because he had like metal straw he had like accessories like I really wanted one of his makeup bags you know, God, why? God, it just makes me mad. So <laughs> I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Uh, I haven't had Starbucks. I'm no longer. I can't do Starbucks anymore. And I haven't had Chick Fil A. I can't do Chick Fil A. And I've been craving. And I've been craving Chick Fil A. <laughs> That's another disappointment yeah. too, because I'm like, really, Chick Fil A is so good. Like one of the best fast food restaurants out there, and they have to be freaking pigs. Like, ugh. 
Uh, yeah. It kills me. It just kills me. I agree. I mean, no offense, Chick Fil A, but ever start ever since you started standing against gay rights, like mm-hmm. get out of here. Yeah. yeah, get out of here with For your real. chicken. I'm <sighs> over it. Your so oil. unfortunately, yeah, that's what happened. Also, um, if you so with the sorry, going back to the YouTube drama, if you everyone needs to follow Peter Mon on YouTube. Oh my God, he's so funny. Is and he, he talks a lot about drama? He's the silver daddy of YouTube. Yes, he's the I little. Love... He's the gay man with the with the blue eyes and the gray hair and goatee. Yes, yes, and yes, yes, he's yes. He's so funny. cute <laughs> and so handsome and so funny. Like I just anyway, he's just the cutest. I and think I, I love... watched one of his videos when he did when the Jaclyn Hill scandal, her lipstick scandal happened. I think I watched yes. his video on that, and I was like, dang, he's a. Yeah. Uh, honest (laughs) yeah he's got some good opinions i will say that he i like watching him because he talks um and and he said this before i believe too where he he talks because he's seen a lot you know he's older um he's not old by any means people like to say that a lot but okay the tweens the 13 the 12 and 13 year olds that are watching youtube right now sit down okay (laughs) not every you're not gonna be 12 and 13 forever okay (laughs) i don't think he's old but he is older so he's seen a lot of things and and he so he speaks to that and when he's talking he he talks about his experiences too and that you know he's not perfect either and so he anyway so there's just he speaks a I like the way he um his opinions on things and he, yes he definitely lays it out for you like look this is what I think and it is that's you know he's a drama commentator so that's what he he talks about but it's really interesting anyway Peter Mon on YouTube and I've been watching his videos recently and he's been talking all about obviously what's going on in the YouTube community. So it's been really good, but I like him. Yeah, girl. What else? There's that. And then I, (laughs) Uh, cause it's the Lauren show. So anyways, um, (laughs) so then I, um, I started, well, I've told y'all I started doing, um, scrapbook journaling, which has been, yes. yes, that's cute too. So thanks. So there's this um, girl that I discovered on TikTok and she does scrapbook journaling and I think she's from Turkey because she um, posts a lot of like the way they dress, like their um, cultural dress wear that, or, you know, how they dress and it's really pretty. Anyways, um, but she does that and she just goes crazy. Like she uses like, she'll take uh, pieces of, she'll rip pieces of paper out of books and she has like all these different tape designs and stickers. And then she has like the wax that you melt to like put the stamp on. And Ooh. she just has like all of these things. And, 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 you know, she's not like, she doesn't have like the greatest handwriting. Cause you know how some of those bullet journal pages, like these people are like calligraphers. And so they have like really yeah. good handwriting and you're just like, okay, I can't remake that because you do, I don't, I don't write like you, you know what I mean? Like you feel like you yeah. can't really like replicate what they're doing because you don't write like that I don't know that's how I am but this girl like she has like like basic handwriting like it's not so I don't know it's more realistic for me so I was like okay I'm gonna try it so last weekend I went to Target and I got a new notebook it's so cute and then I went to Michael's (laughs) and I just spent a lot of money (laughs) (laughs) I got you know honestly I'm probably gonna go back today because I'm starting to use all my supplies I need to, I need to re-up. I need to re-up. Wow. So addicted. I just, it's so yeah, cool. It's so kidding. much fun because you pick like your stationery. So I, I had like a whole booklet of like stationery and you pick your stickers and they have like decorative tape, which I didn't know craft tape. Like that's a thing. Like pattern tape. Oh my, yeah. pattern tape. Who does that? It's amazing. And then they have like, I bought like some gel pens and some like marker <laughs> pens and then scissors and glue stick. And I've just been going to town and I've been because I'm not a writer like I'm not a big journal person it's hard for me to keep diaries it's, it's hard for me to write my days down you know mm-hmm. me too. I don't know it's not very creative so what do you write on your scrapbooks do you like write quotes and stuff? yes like, so I'll go to Pinterest okay. and I'll just look up positive quotes um life quotes um things like that and I'll just write the my favorites down I have I have 
I just recently like spit out two poems randomly like a couple of weeks ago. Oh yes, and um, so I <laughs> wrote those. Queen. I wrote those. Yeah, in there. squirrel. Yeah, I've never written a poem before. Honestly, those were my. I'm not kidding. Those were like my first two that I wrote. Anyway, so I wrote those in there, and then yeah, so it's just fun because you just like decorate the page, and then you just leave space for where you want to write, and it's just very like I don't know. I like it. Are you going to yeah. be start being a scrapbook YouTuber or or TikToker or whatever? <laughs> I don't know because I'm really, do it, I'm, do it. Well, I'm really bad at sticking to hobbies. The only <laughs> hobby that I've ever managed to stick to is makeup, and it's because I do it every day. That's like the one thing that I've been able to be consistent with. I've been doing makeup since what high school, middle school, I don't know, and. I've Ashley's Ashley you're the one who actually got me on YouTube you introduced me to Jacqueline Hill she was the first YouTube Shout artist out. that I followed Shout and then I me, not Jacqueline Hill <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but for all <laughs> um yeah. Another so, unfortunately problematic queen on YouTube. Oh my so. God. She, you know, that's a whole other episode. Anyways, yeah. um, <laughs> so makeup's the only thing that I've been consistent with, but I've always wanted to try other things because people have hobbies. So I've been trying to do, find something to stick to. So I don't know. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> Because I also get bored really easily, too. And I'm just like, okay, I'm tired of doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. I mean, I kind of feel that, though. Like, I took up watercolor painting. And I'm still into it. But it was definitely one of those hobbies that I was like, oh, my God, I love the Instagram aesthetics on these pictures. <laughs> right. Let me go out and buy everything so that I could <laughs> That's try how I was. <laughs> That's how I was. In a I less was. than professional environment with less than professional tools <laughs> and a less Literally. than professional work ethic. <laughs> yes. So... I get it. And I think, you know, that's okay, though. It's okay to flip. That's why you find what you like, I feel like. Because, you know, yeah. you just flip yeah. into trial and error. But it's just yeah. really funny because I don't like anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like anything. You know, people, like, will ask me, like, what makes you happy? Or what, what do you like to do? And it's like, nothing. I don't, like, fucking do anything. Okay? I don't do anything. Sleep. Yeah. Like, I just want to be in bed all the time. That's it. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. But that's the way I was, too. I fell in love. I was on this girl's TikTok for I don't even know how long. I pretty much saw every post on her on her TikTok. She doesn't have that many. But every single post was so good because it's just the way she the way she films it, too. It's just very aesthetically pleasing. And I'm over here thinking that I can do that. Like, oh, my God, I can totally do a journal like that. That's so easy. But I also don't have yeah. the patience for it either because they're, she's one of those like daily. And that's the thing too. Like I tried doing bullet journaling a couple of years ago because at mm -hmm. one point that was a trend on Instagram. Me too. And yeah. uh, I don't have the patience for that shit. Absolutely I not. I was like, how? I'm, And then also too, since I don't have like good handwriting like that, like the way they write, you know, and I just, I don't know, the, the creativeness, how you create, like, your planner or your layout or whatever, I just wasn't good at it. So that lasted, like, a solid week or two, and then I completely gave up on that. <laughs> yep. I did that, too. I did that, I too. I love bullet journaling. Whatever, oh, Cindy. I love God. bullet journaling. Oh, Helen knows <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I Helen. Of course you oh, do. Cindy. I don't do it every day, but I love it. <laughs> God. <laughs> And you're probably really good at it. How come oh, you yeah. never showed us your stuff then? You should send it to us. Sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It. Well, so I love Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my goodness. It's like it's freaking... because la... it's because last week we clocked oh, yeah. ourselves on interrupting each other. And so now we're like, go ahead. <laughs> Do you, you sister? <laughs> no, you first Can girl. You... Stop talking, please. Go ahead. <laughs> it was mainly me that was cutting everybody off. So I'm trying to play my I'm trying to know my place right now. Okay. So Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. Ask everybody who knows me. I interrupt people all the time. I just get excited with my thoughts and I just yeah. Yeah. jump Yeah, in. you just get excited and like nervous too, because that was our first podcast episode too. And <laughs> look, let us live. <laughs> let us live. We are trying the best we can under the yeah. circumstances that we're in, aka quarantine. Yeah. Okay. Quarantine. So we're trying to be socially responsible by not meeting, even if we're six feet away, even if we have masks on, we're just trying to avoid it altogether. So everyone can yeah. shut the fuck up. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Cindy, what were we saying? Who, where were we? Okay, I was saying. I... Rewind the clock, Cindy. Okay. Let's go back into this. Okay. I love bullet journaling. I just don't do it every day. And I just don't feel like I live up to the bullet journal circumstances. It's the Instagram like, expectations. I'm telling exactly. you. Exactly. And I know, and I, it's so annoying because when I watch videos and like, influencers or anybody just creative people doing these bullet journals they're like don't worry it doesn't have to be perfect and then they do this perfect freaking (laughs) book and I'm like what do you mean this has to be perfect my line's freaking crooked you have a perfect box over here like it just and it ruins you know, my vision. <laughs> that's how I feel about makeup because I'm the same way. I've always wanted to create like Instagram makeup videos or YouTube. I've always wanted to, but I just don't know how to do it. Like I don't know how to edit. I don't really know how to do like voiceovers. And I know it's easy to easy to do, but then also it goes back to the patience. Like I don't have time. I don't feel like it yeah. because filming takes it's like a whole fucking day. I just don't have. To, I just don't feel like doing it. Anyways, so but I'll come across and not to sound. Ugly, ugly because I'm not trying to be ugly I'm just saying (laughs) but I've come across some makeup accounts on Instagram where they're pretty basic like their makeup techniques they're pretty basic and they're like they're like film set up and their lighting set up it's like you can totally tell they're just recording off of their iPhone you know like it's pretty basic and they have like thousands of followers thousands of views um they're you know they have pr packet they're, they're on pr lists because they're posting like pr lists you know videos and so i'm just thinking to myself okay if these basic people can have successful instagrams then yeah, i but... can too because i'm pretty skillful with makeup i'm telling you to just do it yeah, but just, just do stop it stop waiting just do it God. i'm just lazy because then you psych yourself out i'm just lazy it's just I'm and just... then you regret it wow well. I'm just lazy. <laughs> I'm sure what they have is they're confident. They, you know, they, I'm sure they have <sighs> some sort of like social media presence to some degree. You know, like okay, so maybe better work ethic. Perfect. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it is. <laughs> it's that, yeah. and it's so funny because anyway. during uh, quarantine, when I wasn't working for two months, I was like, oh, this is a perfect time to get into that but all i did was just take pictures i didn't record or film anything (laughs) but i will say it was fun doing that i did enjoy getting especially when you know we weren't going out we weren't doing anything so it was fun putting make like a full beat you know and then like taking Mm -hmm. pictures like it was it was fun those were fun to do but i mean it was just for my (coughs) you you know what i mean sorry jesus <sighs> yeah yeah squirrel yeah. i say you should just do it i think you're very talented with makeup yeah. oh, and very creative oh, those are really and pretty instagram pictures too that you took oh thanks yeah so i mean i don't know if you love doing it i feel like you should just do it you should just press record I yeah just... it's like what we're doing now we're like okay we're literally just talking with each other yeah like but... we regularly do and we're just recording it that's all you have to do in your makeup uh... And then when you get all famous, you can get a editor to do all your videos for you. Yeah. So you don't have to so... work. And move into a mansion with a team of people. Yeah. Ew. And then build us houses. I don't understand how they... Yeah. Okay, first of all, I don't understand how people do that. Why would you want to live with your assistant? And then as an assistant, why would you want to live with your boss? That's more of what I don't understand. As like, an that's assistant, weird. Like, like I want to go home. Right. I don't want to be in your house yeah. all day. I don't, I don't be... care if it's three thousand square feet. I don't want to be there all day. Right. It's your house. Like right. I want my own place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what? So speaking of like Jeffrey Star. When I would watch them like on Instagram and their stories and stuff like that, and they're always saying like, there's people in my house all the time. I've got like tons of people in my house with me all the time. I have like seven people that live with me and they're none of them are family. They all work for me. And I'm just like, that's so weird. That's it's so weird. Like that's so up in my space. That's so why, why just be by yourself? Yeah. Anyways, I don't know how I we agree. got here. I don't know how we got here, but... Lindsay, what else have you done this week? Oh, you said nothing, right? Or <laughs> what'd you say? Uh, yeah, uh, nothing. subtle shade. God, <laughs> Ashley, she's over here walking in with a freaking umbrella with the shade. Yeah. 
I've just been working and oh, you have house hunting. Oh, you have. Oh, oh my god. Oh, just and casual drop. House. That's another thing too. <laughs> just house hunting because Lindsay's gonna be the first one to own a house. <laughs> yeah. Ashley's in a house. True. Thanks. Not Ashley owns a house. <laughs> Ashley's, Ashley's in, in a, a house. house. <laughs> The shade just keeps coming from you, Cindy. Listen, doesn't it? I'm oh, sorry. You yeah. have an umbrella? Yeah. Oh, well, I have a canopy <laughs> with yeah. my own bar and my charcuterie board. That's fucking Lindsay. God. Always got a one up. Yes, no. Bianca owns this house. Okay. And okay. I just live here. No, no and no, I live no. here. I co owner. Don't try to back <laughs> track. Don't try to. Don't try to, try go to make it better and make it better. Okay, listen, I'm trying. Meanwhile, here. I'm about to move back in with my parents, so <laughs> no shame, no so... shame. No, there is no shame in that. If I, can I'm no not. You know how that, excited I, I am to like yeah. save money. Yes, I'm just like you know what, buy it now because you're gonna save it later. You know, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can you're hear back. you now. Oh, yes. I dropped out. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, y'all dropped, and I was like, uh, hello, I'm talking to myself. Wow. Okay, <laughs> and then sorry. you blamed us for you dropping out. That's what happened. Well, could I don't know what happened. Already. Okay. Could hear it already. Okay. So uh, house hunting has okay. been stressful. Yes, it's been stressful. To say the least. And luckily for me, I haven't really been overwhelmed yet. I'm, paying, I'm saying yet because I feel like it's coming. Just because the market is insane. Like, there's just so many. There are a lot of houses up. um, But Gabriel and I are being picky with. Hello. Again, sorry. Gabriel called me. Gabriel. (laughs) Can you. Okay. 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 Where did you. Where did I. And you're marrying him, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know at this point. He knows I'm recording. (laughs) god the disrespect Jesus. okay the ring anyway. is pretty so it, thank you it is, i love it <laughs> yeah it is it's pretty oh, oh my geez. god <laughs> let's see okay 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 i just texted him i'm sorry okay okay i can't uh, like leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> That's for Gabriel, right? That's not for us. Yeah, you're that was... never gonna leave you alone your whole life. <laughs> this is it. Yes, so that was for Gabriel and probably my future kids. <laughs> <laughs> I already kicked Luna out, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. anyway, okay. Anyway, the market house is... hunting, fucking house sucks. hunting. That's yes. what I've it, heard that's, so far. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it's just the market's crazy. Houses are selling literally within a day. We have put offers in on three houses already and been declined so it's just insane it's insane and it's just it's stressful because one we just are anxious to get in the house and two we're also in our apartment right now and our lease was supposed to end the beginning of august but luckily we were able to extend it to the end of august but that's still like a huge time crunch Mm -hmm. and so it's just stressful because we're like okay what are we gonna do are we gonna find a house by then do we have to go back into an apartment? Do do we move in with a family member? You know, what do we do? So it's just that's what's yeah. stressing me out. <clears throat> yeah. But um but well, yeah, you I mean can other always... than that, it's it's fun. Yeah. You can always move in with us, of course. Of course this Thank isn't my you. house, so I guess I have to ask Bianca. No! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> that's that's not clear. it. So, okay, wait. Also, <laughs> where are they gonna stay? Because also that's where I'm moving in. <laughs> Well, we would probably just take the nerd room. We have our furniture, so sorry. Honestly, Binks. honestly, yeah. I mean, I have two empty rooms, you know. So it's up. It's up to y'all. Yeah, but y'all are always welcome. Whoever needs, we'll a move place into to the stay backyard. Is always welcome. Yeah, y'all do you. We have there a are. <laughs> oh my god! With your shade, you're absolutely right. Yes. Jesus. Oh. God. Yeah. All right. Well, good. So everyone's <laughs> moving in is what I just heard. And we just decided on Our it. dream is coming true. We've always, yes. planned, <laughs> we've always planned on moving in oh together, living together forever. Although it's not on land, it's still happening. <laughs> <laughs> so Gabriel I'm, and Bianca are, yeah, they just yeah. need to figure it out. That's what it is. Yeah. You know what we need to figure out? The truth 
is Lauren's cats. That's what I need to figure out. I'm, you know, we'll be fine. It'll be fine. I don't know. I, I could d- absolutely die. That's not an I understatement. Okay, if we were all to be living <laughs> together, I wouldn't buy cats. God. <laughs> huh? I know that. Jesus. Y'all but they're cute. All, but if Lauren moves in, we just gotta make sure she doesn't kill us. We just gotta make sure she's not gonna kill us. So it's fine. We'll figure it out. We just gotta make sure she doesn't uh, give kill her cats and leaves them in her house. Like, look, geez, guys. Lindsay yeah. and I want to love cats, but we are really allergic. And Lauren is not. Well, it just yeah. sucks, though. But but it, it sucks, though, sucks. because I feel like a lot of people are allergic to cats. So I feel kind mm-hmm. of risky getting a cat because it's like, you know, who says the next person I meet is going to be cool with cats? So it's okay, either, but... you know, so if they're allergic to like, like you guys, like y'all are allergic to cats. So if I meet someone mm-hmm. who's like that, I'm going to get rid of my cat. I read this meme though that was like if you <laughs> so you know it's true because it was in a meme. Yeah. So I read this meme that was like, um, if you if I if we're in a relationship and I have a cat and you're allergic, and I take a pill for you every month to not get pregnant, you could take a Zyrtec every day to like you know withstand my cat. And I thought it was funny. True. So use that. And I will say, yeah. I will say for anyone out there, for anyone who's listening, here you go. Don't get a pet with your partner if you know you're not going to be with that partner. Because yeah. breakups with pets is stupid. Okay? And it's unnecessary. So yeah. just know that. Anyways. Yeah, Bianca and I have two dogs, and we know who's going to get each dog. And we've been together for 10 years, and we already have it planned out. And we don't have any plans of breaking up, but we still know because you just, you know, you got to be prepared. Because I'm getting Olive, and she's getting Fig, just in case anyone wants to know. That's that's fitting. That's fitting. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. fitting. Really? You'd get Olive? You don't even like Olive. But she listens. So Olive walks all over Bianca. That's true. But Ashley is, Ashley raised Olive. Yeah, yeah true. Olive is so Olive again for those of you that don't know, which is everyone. Um, <laughs> Olive is so I have two dogs. We have two dogs, Bianca and I. Olive and Fig. Olive is the older. <laughs> she's like around seven or eight years old. She's like a Papillon, uh, which is like one of those butterfly dogs, um, mm-hmm. a toy breed. She's a toy. She's small. Uh, Papillon, like maybe Chihuahua mix. So she's super small, smallest dog ever. She's only six pounds. <laughs> and she is a terrible person. <laughs> like if she was a person, she would be a terrible person. We I'm just like moody. <laughs> yeah, no one likes Olive. Like moody, angry, anxious, like will bite you, you know, but will also love you at the same time. <laughs> like she's just all over the place. And Fig is the a puppy that we actually just got. Um, a friend of mine's mother-in-law found her um, kind of walking around a neighborhood that was near a highway. So um, no one could take her. So we, uh, Bianca and I took her. So she's, she's about to be a year in September, we think. And she's like, she's also a small, she's only about 10, 10, 11 pounds, uh, like a terrier mix. And she is the most loving thing ever she loves everyone she wants to cuddle with everyone she'll sleep with you she's just the most loving thing ever olive attacks her on the (laughs) weekly like we can't olive just body rolls her just you know like she does not like anything and but the thing about olive is is that i adopted olive in when lauren it was the same time as 2016 17 2016 no, you're right. 20... It was 2016 because it was right before Trump got elected. Yeah, that's yeah. when it was. So 2016. Um, so we've had, and she was already an adult, obviously an adult dog. So we've had her for, for a few years now. And Olive is just a, so special <laughs> that she needs a special person, me, who can handle her to take care of her. She doesn't listen to Bianca at all. She listens to me. So I, I feel like just what's best for Olive is to have me take her to have me get bit every day like that's just the, <laughs> that's just the path that we're all, me and olive are just we're together forever Ooh.
Luna Tuna. She knows you're there. She just wants to be with you, probably. Oh, yeah. It's just annoying. Um, I'm here all the time. (laughs) It's just just super annoying. Like, get a life. Oh, my God. Imagine if you were, like, a mom and you said that. You're like, it's just annoying being here all the time with my fucking kid. You know? Like, it's just annoying. That would be Like, that would be, you know, it's it's just annoying that I'm here all the time with with my kid. You know? But it's fine. No big deal. Shout out to the moms right now. Because I, I know. know. I was just about to say and I'm that. sure they do say that. Like, I'm sure moms parents. have said that. I'm sure that's a common statement. Oh, yeah. But... Doesn't mean there's no love there. Right. Like, But come on. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. But yes, because me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I say that to Bianca sometimes. Let's keep it real. I say that. I'm like, I'm with you all the time. <laughs> can you. <laughs> Can you please give me six feet? Right. All right, guys. <laughs> Put on a mask and give me six feet, please, Bianca, because I'm over it. Do you hear this? Yes. What yes. is that? That's my hair. So I'm trying to pull it back here. Let me pull my let me put my hair up too, just in case. That's I had exactly really... what it sounded like. Okay, well maybe it is. It was me. you. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> it's all your fault. Oh my God. First, okay, just re- remember that it was Lindsay first. Lindsay, so. she comes okay. back. She comes back at you. She's like, yeah, bitch, it's your fault. <laughs> I, know. I know. Just kidding. Just kidding. God. Listen. Hold I'm on, sorry, okay? My... 